Well, praise the Lord. We thank God for Jesus today. We thank God for another opportunity to praise God to come and hopefully to enlighten you, to uh, spur you toward uh, uh, doing a little bit more of digging in the Word of God yourself to try to find out what is truth today because there is question mark as to what is the truth, but we believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the answer to all the problems we're facing today. Praise God, and we have no doubt about that whatsoever in our hearts and our minds today. Praise God. I'm James A. Dansby, pastor of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. So glad to be coming to you once again. And praise God, we're currently doing a study of the prayers of Jesus from the beginning of his ministry to the very, very end. And we're, we're coming to the end right now. Praise God. This is really the last prayer in this series. I think it's the last prayer, but it's not the least important. I think it's the most important prayer uh, in this series because of the repercussions it has upon the lives of uh, people today, especially in the atmosphere, toxic atmosphere that we're facing today. Praise God. The last prayer in this series, and we're going to take this week, God's uh, willing uh, to, to labor in this last prayer and uh, hopefully be able to help us to uh, maybe calm some of the, the atmosphere that uh, are, so, uh, are so toxic today with uh, violence and hatred and animosity. Uh, this is not God's will. It's not God's way. But now, this last prayer is found in Luke 23, Luke, the 23rd chapter, verse 34. Then said Jesus, it says, and I, we can just quote that right off the bat, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus' last prayer on the cross. Praise God. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, in this prayer, Jesus is praying for his enemies, his enemies that are gathered around the cross at this particular time, taunting him, uh, mocking him, and uh, praise God, even uh, casting lots for his garments, I think the Bible says. You know, in other words, he prays for his enemies. And uh, these are the last, these are the, the, the first words, really, uh, uh, that Jesus spoke from the cross. But uh, at the same time, you know, we realize that uh, the dying words, the last words of a dying man usually carry a lot of weight. And especially uh, this particular man being the Son of God himself. His last words on the cross, praise God, making them the most important words in a, in a way. Father, forgive them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, he's praying for his enemies. And we could never, this is a picture here that uh, uh, you, you just can't, uh, you, you just can't get a hold to as he's on the cross with the thieves, the two uh, men beside him and, and, and the people down at the bottom there. And uh, he's praying for them. He's praying for his enemies. In Matthew 6, the 12th verse, you know, that's the model prayer uh, that uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. And he told them that uh, in that uh, 12th verse, uh, to pray to the Father and ask him to forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, Christ was teaching them uh, in this model prayer, uh, we should pray for forgiveness is what he says. Forgiveness for those who have offended us, those who we have offended. Uh, that was important from the beginning of his great message on the Sermon on the Mount and also on the cross before he completed his mission. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So it's important that we understand that forgiveness, forgiveness must be practiced by Christians today and not only Christian, but mankind in general. Praise God. The ramifications are, are, are far and wide to those who would harbor unforgiveness in their hearts. And I'm convinced, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that unforgiveness in our hearts is a catalyst toward many of the ills we have in our body when we hold pent up 
anger and hatred against our brothers and our sisters. I believe it's called the cataclysmic uh, 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 movement of, 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 of genes and, and, and diseases and all kind of things in our body that shouldn't be there. I think if we open up a foreign invasion of these uh, uh, sicknesses and diseases that uh, would never have been there if it wasn't for unforgiveness that we harbor in our heart. Now, in the book of Genesis, it is where forgiveness is first introduced to mankind. In the book of Genesis, and we know that God uh, uh, created Adam and Eve and put them in a garden, paradise, and, and gave them instructions uh, what to do, what not to do. And, of course, they did the very thing God told them not to do. Uh, and therefore, praise God, they sinned against God. And therefore, God uh, put them out of the garden. In other words, uh, forgiveness is first introduced to mankind in the beginning. God forgave Adam and Eve for their transgressions against him, against his word. And therefore, praise God, therefore God demands forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very important part how we interact with our brothers and sisters. Forgiving them. Now, of course, forgiveness began long before the Garden of Eden. Actually, it, forget, it, it began in the council, the eternal council of God, uh, the Father, between God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, before the world was even made, before man was created, before anything was created. There was a council meeting in the heavens. And in that meeting, God introduced the plan to make man in his own image. And after making man in his own image, uh, God uh, told the council that uh, um, uh, he would give them a set of rules and they would not obey those rules. And therefore, uh, it would be necessary that uh, someone, someone go down and keep my laws perfectly, the laws they broke. And of course, God told them specifically that the soul that sent it, it's going to die. Praise God. And they began to die immediately. Uh, yeah, and we have to understand what death really is. You know, no, a lot of people say, well, God said that they were going to die, but they didn't die. Yes, they did. They died spiritually. They died in their ability to communicate with God. See, when you uh, break God's laws and God's rules, you die spiritually. And man is spiritually dead today. That's why we can't communicate with God unless we've been born again. But in that eternal council, uh, Christ volunteered. He said, here am I. I'll go. I'll go down. I'll keep the law. What they broke, I'll fix it. What they broke, I'll keep. Praise God, I'll glorify your word. I'll bring honor back to you again, Father. I'll go down. So now, Christ came down, and here he is on the cross. He's completing his mission. Praise God. And the first words on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So now, in the fall of man, forgiveness becomes uh, an unnatural behavior to, for him. That which was natural to God, became a foreign agent to his creation, to man himself. And at the cross of Jesus, we see two types of people. We see people that uh, who, who are willing to forgive. Two types of people. Christ himself set an example, willing to forgive. Then there's another group there at the bottom, not willing to forgive, but full of hatred, full of anger. Praise God. That's why we are today. Look at, look at the problem we have in the world today. People are hating, hating brothers and sisters. And not only that, but actually they are hating God. Look what Christ says here. Father, forgive them. He prayed that the Father would forgive the people. Why? Why the Father forgive them? Because we have sinned against God. Huh? God sent. God is one put this thing in motion and sent His Son down here to die for us. We have sinned against God, so we got people today in the world. A few are willing to forgive, but the majority, based on what we see in the streets today, when we see the monuments being pulled down and thinking about what happened yesterday, they will not forgive. They'd rather destroy this country than to forgive. So these are the kind of people that are predominantly in the world today. Praise God. People that will not forgive their enemies. Those who have repented. They have repented of the sins of their ancestors. But they still won't forgive them. 
Praise God. But many of them say they're Christians. Oh, I, I love the Lord. Yeah, you say that, don't you? Huh? But you don't have a forgiving heart. Praise God. Uh, you know, all true believers, let me say this here. We're going to deal with this all week long. Praise God. All true believers uh, have been given the ability to forgive their enemies, even as Christ forgave his enemies. I'm talking about true believers. I'm not talking about church cause. I'm not talking about church people. I've been one of those. I was one of those all my life. But I got saved around 23, 24 years old. I got saved. I mean, truly saved by the power of God. And the love of Jesus came in my heart where I could even love my enemies. Praise God. But now all true believers must follow the example of Jesus Christ on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm talking about all believers now. Are you a believer? You say you are. You go to church on Sunday, but yet you will not forgive uh, those who have put us in slavery uh, many, many hundreds of years ago. You won't forgive them, right? You won't forgive them. You won't forget it. You want some kind of revenge, reparations. You want something. But you say you love the Lord, don't you? Oh, I hear you. Uh, Matthew 5 and 43, Jesus said, look at Jesus said, you have heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to, sh to rise on the evil and on the good, and send it rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what kind of reward do you have? Do not even the publicans, the unsaved people do that, uh, believers. Uh, if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Uh, the unsaved people do that. But be ye therefore perfect, Jesus said, even as your father in heaven is perfect. Christian people, following Christ, we are to forgive our enemies. Praise God. Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive these people that have uh, are done uh, atrocious things to you and your people in the past, Jesus said, neither will your Father forgive you, which is in heaven, of your trespasses. Now, that's what the Lord said. Christian people are held to a higher standard a much higher standard than those people in the world. Now, Luke 6 and 27, he says, Jesus said, But I say unto you uh, which here love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, and them which curse you. I pray uh, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smited thee on the one cheek also offer the other. To him that take away thy cloak, forbid not to take also thy Coat. Now, these are the words to our, uh, from our Lord to the believers, though, to the believers in Christ. Luke 17, 3, uh, it says, Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, uh, 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 rebuke him. And if he repent now, if he repent, forgive him. Forgive him. Oh, boy, a little girl down on her knees there repenting of uh, 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 white privilege the other day. Oh, God, my wife, I'm sorry for what my ancestors done. Oh, boy, but they wouldn't forgive her. Oh, boy, Christian people. Mm. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. The apostle said unto, him, said unto the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. We can't do that, and a lot of you can't do it today. Huh? Like these church folks couldn't do it here. Huh? They said, Lord, we need more faith. You need more faith. You need to be saved. That's all there is to it. You just basically need to know the Lord. Because when you're saved, the Lord gives us a new heart. He gives us a new spirit, praise God, where we can love our enemies and forgive them. Well, really, whether they repent or not, we need to forgive them. But especially when they're down on their knees begging for forgiveness, for what their great, great, great dad, dad, daddies have done, praise God, but yet we are holding it against them, and we're demanding blood, praise God, oh God, the Lord, he will not forgive us, and, and, and when most Ephesians are 4, it says in 432, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. 
Praise God. We're going to be looking at this subject all week long, God's will, because forgiveness is the answer to the problem today. We got problems today. We got problems in our churches today. We got problems among ministers that won't preach forgiveness, but are rather marching with these groups. Marching with these groups. Who says that their agenda is anti-God? But you're marching anyhow. Oh, come on now. Praise God. We'll look at it this week. Uh, if God's will, forgiveness. God expects forgiveness from all of his children. Now, if you enjoyed this video, praise God, we want you to go over to the like button over there. Hit that like button over there. And uh, praise God, there's a subscription button there. If you just hit that subscription button also, we'll come to you again, praise God. God will next week. And we'll bring you more, more, more information on forgiveness. May God bless you. May God keep you as our prayer.